whenever beta ape is connected to positive only then the current is said to flow whenever there is certain energy which has been provided the electrons which is lying above the valence band it jumps to the conduction band whenever the holes which is positively charged particles it moves towards the negative again the depletion region increases Hello everyone I'm Rinda faculty of physics from Vidyashram Pre University College Mysuru welcoming you all to session 1 of chapter 14 that is semiconductor electronics so here we are going to study about the classification of conductors insulators and semiconductors so we all have heard about conductors what exactly the conductors do conductors conducts electricity what about the insulator the one which is opposite to that of conductors which is not good at conducting electricity okay next is semiconductors which behaves like conductors and partially like insulators for that first of all going on with metals or the conductors okay so we have two bands called as conduction band which is up which which shall be calling as cb and valence band which shall be calling as vb okay so there is two bands valence band and conduction band in valence band there is a presence of electrons okay so whenever there is certain energy which has been provided the electrons which is lying above the valence band it jumps to the conduction band if suppose there is no energy gap the gap between conduction band and valence band is called as forbidden energy gap suppose if there is no energy gap no gap between the valence band and conduction band then you can easily call it as conductors because whenever the energy is supplied whatever electrons is present in the valence band all of the electrons will jump to the conduction band okay so there is jumping that is exciting of the electrons from the valence band to the conduction band then we call it as a conductors there is electricity which is conducted that is why it is known as metals or conductors next in the same way we have valence band and conduction band even in the semiconductors in case of semiconductors there is a energy gap and that gap is should be less than 3 electron volt if the gap is very much less than 3 electron volt then we can call this as semiconductors because partial electrons get excited to the conduction band and few other electrons remains or stays there itself that is why it either acts as insulators or acts as conductors okay and when it comes to insulators insulators are the one which has got large number of energy gap that is more than 3 electron volt if the energy level is more than 3 electron volt students what happens to the conduction band and valence band it is separated by a large energy gap at that time when whenever the energy is supplied if the electrons are allowed to excite it never gets excited to conduction band but instead it stays back in the valence band itself so there is no electrons which is jumping and staying near the conduction band okay that is why you can say that that is not a good conductor of electricity that is insulators so whenever the electrons jumps to the conduction band if it jumps here it creates a hole this is known as holes whenever the electrons from the valence band jumps what happens the previous place of the same electron which has already jumped to the conduction band it creates a hole that is a vacant space there understood so we are dealing with holes and electrons in this chapter of ours okay so nothing to do nothing to bother very easy only holes and electrons has to be there in your mind so these are the difference between conductors insulators and semiconductors i hope it is clear to you okay so in this picture if you see these are the conductors thing so here you have got conductors the copper turnings are called as conductors and the colored ones are called as insulators so you are dealing with conductors insulators and semiconductors in the whenever you study about the electric current electricity all these things 
in this chapter specifically we are dealing with semiconductors okay that is why the chapter called semiconductor electronics coming to the semiconductors there are if we are dealing with semiconductors how is the semiconductors differentiated semiconductors has got two types one is intrinsic semiconductors another one is extrinsic semiconductors okay and furthermore when you study you have below extrinsic semiconductors it is divided further divided into two types one is n type semiconductors another one is p type semiconductors so this is n type semiconductors another one is p type semiconductors first of all getting into the intrinsic semiconductor okay here in case of intrinsic semiconductors that is very easy nothing to break your head intrinsic semiconductors are called as pure semiconductors they are known as a pure semiconductors okay and number of electrons in the conduction band in conduction band will be equal to holes in the valence band that is you have a valence band here you have a conduction band here this is valence band this is conduction band so there is exciting of the electrons from the valence band to the conduction band okay so when this occurs all the electrons go up and stay in the conduction band whereas it creates hole at, at its previous position in the valence band so number of electrons in this conduction band is equal to number of holes in the valence band is what you are actually speaking here okay and the excitations of the electrons depends upon its temperature got it that's all about your intrinsic semiconductor when you go for extrinsic semiconductor here you have two types of semiconductors that is n type as well as p type semiconductors n extrinsic semiconductor you can call it as it is impure one that means you're adding a impurity which is called as dopants to what to n type and p type semiconductors the process of adding impurities or the process of adding those impurities whichever we use is called as dopants it it can be group from group 5 elements or it can be from the periodic table itself group 5 elements or group 3 elements okay those are called as dopants elements are called as dopants it is the process the process of adding any dopants to the extrinsic n type or p type semiconductors or the extrinsic semiconductors this process is called as doping so this process is called as doping you'll have to know this it's very important for one mark understood so extrinsic semiconductors are the semiconductors which has got something called as impurities which is present over there and the adding of the impurity that process is called as doping so what is the impurity is called as impurities is known as dopants okay so here you have two types that is n type semiconductors and p type semiconductors let us just check what are the differences which occurs here in n type semiconductors and in p type semiconductors this is also very important in exam point of view okay so in case of n type semiconductors here you have group five elements added to germanium or silicon that is if germanium or silicon if this is the thing you it has got 1 2 3 4 over here okay this is the covalent bond which is present okay so there is a five n type n type means group five that is pentavalent impurities is added to it you can just call it as pentavalent impurities you can remember like for p type no p impurity is added it is 
T impurity is added, for N P impurity is added, it is opposite, like that shortcut you can just remember, okay? N type it is ulta, for N you have P, okay? For P you will have T, T means trivalent impurities are added to germanium or silicon kind of a semiconductor. Germanium and silicon semiconductors are the usual thing what we actually consider. So for this, if pentavalent impurities are added, one will create a bond with this, the other will create a bond with this, the other will create a bond with this and the other with this. So 1, 2, 3, 4 already created a bond with the germanium semiconductor. But what is left? One more will be left. So this type of a semiconductors that is N type of semiconductors can be called as donors. Whereas the opposite of that will be acceptors. So P type semiconductors can be called as acceptors and N type semiconductors can be called as donors. And the third point it can be like when you just see this picture the electrons are more over here. So you can just say that in N type electrons are majority charge carriers and holes are minority minority but in case of trivalent impurities to germanium or silicon it is only three things that is three electrons will be bonded over there but one space will be vacant wherein it is creating hole just for one germanium right likewise there are many germanium elements for which the holes are more that means to say that in case of p type opposite of this that is holes are majority charge carriers whereas Electrons are majority charge carriers and electrons are minority charge carriers in P-type semiconductors. So this is very important. You will have to know the difference between N-type semiconductors and P-type semiconductors. And going on with this, let us just study about P and N junction. So P and junction in the sense you have got P-type semiconductors and you have got n-type semiconductors both fused together p-type and n-type both fused together is called as pn junction so this junction what is created is called as pn junction and in p you have got majority charge carriers are holes and in n-type majority charge carriers are electrons whereas minority charge carriers are electrons here and here minority charge carriers are holes understood so this is all about your pn junction something we'll have to study that is called as a biasing okay so this is all about your pn junction you can just call it as p type semiconductors and you can call it as n type semiconductors so i hope it is clear to you the difference between p type as well as N type semiconductors. I had clearly told you that P type holes are the majority charge carriers. In N type semiconductors, electrons are majority charge carriers for which we have drawn a diagram over here. Understood? And there is a junction between two which is created and due to the biasing you will get to know there is certain region called as this region is called as depletion region. You will get to know what is the role of depletion region in your next slide. Understood? So if you just consider P type here, here N type as I told you holes will be here and minority will be electrons, holes will be more. And in N type, you will have electrons are more and holes are very less. Understood? Now we are getting on to the concept called as biasing. If you are very clear about P type and N type semiconductors, when we just check on, it will be P N junction diode under forward bias, P N junction diode under reverse bias. We have two concepts. Okay, forward bias and reverse bias. Before that, I would just like to tell what is meant by a biasing. Biasing means adding a battery to PN junction. Simple. Okay, so you have a diode here. Okay, so let me just consider this as one diode. P type semiconductors and N type semiconductor. Both are connected to a battery. This is known as biasing. I hope it's clear to you. So now we have to deal with two types of biasing. One is forward biased and another one is reverse biased. 
Let me just tell you, in case of forward bias, PN junction diode under forward bias condition, that means to say that we have a diode, we have a P-type semiconductor, we have a N-type semiconductor. So there are two types of semiconductors, clear? Enough. Forward bias in the sense connecting P-type to positive of the battery, connecting N side to negative of the battery. That is called as PN junction diode under forward bias. So what happens? Now, when the battery is or the source is switched on, the electrons which is present in the end type, it flows towards the positive of the battery. Okay. And the holes which is present in P type. Holes are the majority charge carriers in P type. No. Those move towards the negative side. Which means to say holes are positively charged particles. Electrons are negatively charged particles. You know unlike poles attract each other or unlike charges attract each other because of which the negative charge flows towards the positive of the battery and the positively charged holes flows towards the negative of the battery because of which the depletion region concises. There is a certain region called as a depletion region. This depletion region becomes very much less. This region is called as depletion region. Okay. So, this region concises because of which the L jumping of the electrons is easy and it conducts current. Okay. It conducts. So, we can say that we can take over this principle that is the junction pn junction diode you can say easily that it works under forward bias it works clearly it works under forward bias okay whereas on contrary to this when we just take pn junction diode under reverse bias if suppose we take p type and n type semiconductors and we connect this with so it is reverse bias biasing in the sense battery connecting battery so in a reverse manner ulta okay in a reverse manner it will be p type is connected to negative of the battery and n type is connected to positive of the battery so positively charged particles are majority in p type no for that we consider minus n type means number of electrons is more whereas number of holes is less for that we connect positive of the battery electrons more negative particles are more but connected is positive so what happens the electrons which is present over here as i told you it moves towards the positive that is it moves towards the positive okay so what happens to the this is the first depletion region what we are having so now when just every electrons move towards positive the depletion region increases whenever the holes which is positively charged particles it moves towards the negative again the depletion region increases so there is an increase in the depletion region depletion region because of which it will be very difficult for the minority particles to just excite okay minority charged particles are the one which is responsible now we can take either the favor of majority charged particles or minority charged particles now the minority charged particles has to come into picture but what happens the exciting between these two levels that is the depletion region becomes very difficult because of which it doesn't work under the reverse bias p n junction never works under the reverse bias condition is what we study here okay so on increasing the battery voltage more and more it might damage the semiconductor diode okay in case of reverse bias whereas the best suited one is forward bias but this reverse bias condition will be useful in zener diode i told you the minority charge particles are present over there so zener volt zener diode it acts as a voltage regulator as well okay so because of which you can easily say that a reverse bias condition in case of zener diode is possible understood so now 
Next, we are getting on to application of junction diode as a rectifier. So, first of all, we are studying half wave rectifier circuits. Half wave rectifier. So, before that, let us just see what is a rectifier. Rectifiers are the device which converts AC signals to pulsating DC. Very important word students. Directly DC if you write it is wrong thing. It should be always pulsating DC. From pulsating DC it can be converted directly to DC by adding certain components like inductor or capacitors etc. Okay. So now junction diode is acting as a rectifier here. How is that? Why is that? Why? Because we need to convert AC signals to pulsating DC is what? That is the uses of your rectifier. So there are two types of rectifiers. One is half wave rectifier and one is full wave rectifier. Most important split questions which is for five marks in case of your board exams. Okay. So half wave rectifier circuit is what we study first. First of all, let us just go with circuit diagram. So here, here we have a circuit. So this is an inductor. So this rectifiers work under step down transformer principle. Okay, step down principle it works. So now here we have a less number of coils in the secondary circuit. So it has to go in this manner and we need to connect a diode. Okay, so that di diode is given in this manner diode is given this manner. Before that, I would like to say that there is a diode symbol and this is negative side of the diode and this is the positive plus positive side of the diode. So we have connected in that manner itself positive. This is this is negative. So it just uh, so you have a output which you calculate there. So it is R load resistance so this part you can call it as x point and y point and here you can call it as a and b okay so this is the circuit diagram of a rectifier so here lies the transformer okay this is the complete network or the complete circuit setup of a half wave rectifier so there is a ac signal which is being sent suppose if the cycle is like you send an AC signal in this direction, so you have a positive cycle here. Okay. When it is positive and this is negative, when this is positive, as we had studied in electromagnetic induction, whenever the current is produced in one coil due to the magnetic flux, there is a generation of current in the other coil that is called as induced EMF or the induced current, right? So the same thing is being going over here. That is, this is a positively charged cycle. The positive cycle has been sent over here. When this flows in this manner, what happens? You get the opposite kind by using Lenz law. You get the opposite. Okay. So this is positive. This is negative, which means to say that when a positive cycle flows here, this becomes positive. A becomes positive and your B becomes negative. And it is the opposite of it, which means to say that this is the diode, okay? This is the diode and you can say that when the diode works only in the condition when p-type is forward biased. P-type is positive, n-type is negative. So p and junction both has to be forward biased but it doesn't work in reverse bias condition. Recently, we now, just now we studied, right? So now the thing is like whenever p-type is connected to positive, only then the current is set to flow understood. So here we have input and here we have output signals. So just check together let us just plot a graph and here we have a graph and as well as the second graph is here. Okay. So this is the deviation for every half cycle. This is the half cycles deviations I have drawn now. Okay. Now Whenever you have a positive cycle here, you will get positive in the diode region and negative in the other region. Okay, because negative is coming like this. So you will get the influence of negative at the below. 
understood so this is the primary coil and this is the secondary coil you have and we are dealing with step down transformer principle understood so now the half cycle that is in case of half wave rectifier circuit the half cycles the cycles turns out to be in this manner okay so this is the input whatever we are sending first you will set positive half cycle so this will become positive and this is negative so we have the current which is flowing output we get the answer result okay so in for certain input we get certain output but now if the cycles that is if the cycle every half interval the cycle changes right its direction because of which for this you have got the positive that is the load in case of load resistance you have got the output and it has been calculated it, it can be seen in this manner now secondly the input whatever you give will be negative so this has to be negative when the negative input is flowing this becomes the diode becomes reverse biased and here it is a positive value what we get suppose if this is positive what happens this diode never works under reverse bias condition that is why it has been blank over here again it is the positive input which is sent when this is positive again we get the positive in case of the diode again there is a flow of current understood so this is how exactly we go with the junction diode as a rectifier half wave rectifier only half wave is undergoes rectification understood so because of which the ac signals are converted to pulsating dc is what we actually get here this is a half wave rectifier they might ask split questions one is explanation how exactly the half wave rectifier works with the circuit diagram and one input as well as output together they will ask one set of questions for one mark okay so this a semiconductor diode for five marks it can be asked as 3 plus 2 or 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 2 plus 1 in those series they will ask understood always it is a split questions for five marks from semiconductor diode chapter next in the same way we have got a full wave rectifier here we use two set of diodes so now you have the circuit diagram ac and here you have a primary coil here you have a iron core again here you have a secondary coil wherein two diodes are been fixed okay call this as d1 and d2 primary coil this is secondary coil and this is the transformer region okay you can just call it as transformer and it's been covered and there is a center tap and you have the output load resistance has been connected over here x and y okay so load resistance will be connected over here so this is the circuit connection for a full wave rectifier in this case you have got your input signals which is given by and your output signals is given as voltage at a and uh, voltage across rl load resistance okay so now whenever it is a positive half cycle what happens this becomes positive and this becomes negative so diode d2 doesn't work in this condition only diode d1 works in this condition so now you have got your half cycle you have got a wave next when this is a negative half cycle this becomes positive and this becomes negative at this time you have got other set that is again there is this becomes positive and that becomes negative so that you have a output again you get the other output again third time when this becomes positive this becomes positive this is negative then you get the reading output likewise it goes on okay so now you have got the continuously pulsating dc without any blank in between 
okay so now you can easily write this is due to d1 diode this is due to d2 this curve is due to d1 this curve is due to d2 that is why like at, at a time either of the two will work once when d diode one work the diode two is paused because it is in reverse bias condition when the diode two works diode one will be in pause state because it works in the reverse bias condition the same thing continues this is a full wave rectifier circuit study the circuit diagram study the input and output curve nature of the curve as well as the explanation explain the working of it again it will be the same question pattern that a semiconductor diode it's for five marks either they can ask half wave rectifier or they can ask full wave rectifier okay but they'll be asking asked in split questions that's all about your half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier which is said as very important and next we are dealing with special purposes the 4p injunction diode it works as a zener diode you have got a picture of a zener diode here this is how exactly the zener diode is symbolized this is a positive and this is the negative terminal of the Zener diode. So this Zener diode, as I told you, this works under reverse bias condition. And here, the minority charge carriers also plays an important role. So it acts as a voltage regulator. However high or however low the voltage is being sent, there is increase or decrease, both increase or decrease in the voltage which is supplied to this. That is unregulated voltage is being supplied to this. The resistance here here as the voltage increases or decreases same thing goes on with the resistors also okay so resistance also either it increases the resistance or decreases the resistance whatever the circumstances the flow of voltage across the zener diode will lie in the same way because whatever unregulated voltage has been sent due to the parallel connection with the load resistance what we get the regulated voltage okay that concept is been thought here okay whether the voltage is very high or whether the voltage is very low which is said to be unregulated voltage when it flows through the resistance rs in case of the resistance part either it will be decrease in resistance or increase in the resistance due to which either you will have a less voltage drop or more voltage drop Whatever the circumstances when the output has been received due to the presence of this parallel connection of Zener diode and parallel connection of the load, we get a regulated voltage which means to say that the voltage offered is always said to be constant though there is increase or decrease in the voltage which is supplied that is the input voltage that is why you can call it as Zener diode is used as a voltage regulator you will have to study this circuit diagram and why it is called as a voltage regulator and what is called as a voltage regulator all these questions will be asked zener diode is called as a voltage regulator so there is a parallel connection between zener diode and a load resistance and the zener diode is always in series with the series resistance okay rs understood the resistance so unregulated voltage has been converted to regulated voltage that is by using what it is by using zener diode okay so that is all about your zener diode which works as a voltage regulator and zener diode it works in the reverse bias condition you will have to remember it next is opto electronics junction devices in the sense the semiconductor device where are other streams where it is useful that is in photodiodes which is used for detecting the optical signals which is also called as photodetectors, light emitting diode, LED, which converts the electrical energy into light energy, photovoltaic devices, optical uh, radiations will be connected to the electricity. All these things are the ones which is which uses the semiconductor devices. Next is digital electronics and logic gates. Here you study about the logic gates which you already know. If you are a CA student you will easily know what exactly is the logic gates. These are the minute or the basic connections for the complicated circuit. Whatever you see in your circuit connection, complicated circuit connections as such. Okay. So now first of all let us just move with the NOT gate. First of all, let's deal with NOT gate. It's very easy, just the symbol, just the formula, just the truth table. Over. Okay. So now, in case of NOT gate, how exactly the symbol of NOT gate given? It's a triangle with a knot at the behind and a line and one input. Input is called as A and output is called as Y. 
Okay, so here the formula of output is y is equal to a inverse or it is called as a complement. Whichever a we get, we get out complement of it. Okay, for this when you just draw a truth table, you have got the formula that is the input. Let us just check the input. The truth table for this NOT gate, you have two columns, two rows and here it is input and here it is output. Input is known as A, output is known as Y, Y is equal to A complement which means to say that if the input is 1, what happens to the output? It is 0. If the input is 0, what happens to the output? It is 1, opposite of this. This is the NOT gate. Understood? So the maximum value will always be 1 and minimum value will always be 0. We just play the game with 1 or 0. Because of which we will get to know its working nature. Understood? So now, most basic gate with one input and one un output. That's all. One input and one output. It produces one output if the input is zero as we go have got here and vice versa as we got here. That it produces an inverted version. Okay. So not gate produces inverted version of the input and at its output. This is why it is known as inverter. So not gate is also called as inverter is what you will have to remember. Is that clear to you? Similar way, let us just go to the next gate that is OR gate. So in case of OR gate over here, there are two inputs, input A, call it as input B and here it is output Y. Okay, so this is the OR gate what we have. So formula of OR gate is Y is equal to A plus B. Okay, so now the truth table when we just draw, we need to have two inputs and one output. So input A, input B and output Y is equal to A plus B. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. These are the probabilities. When it is 0 and 0, the output also is 0. When it is 0 and 1, output is 1 because A plus B is 1. 1 and 0, it is 1 again. 1 and 1, it is 1 again. 1 plus 1 is not 2. I told you the maximum will always be 1 and minimum will always be 0. Not lower than that and no, maximum is not higher than 1. Okay. So this is the value for OR gate. You have upcoming gate called as NOR gate. In case of NOR gate, it is opposite of this because complementary we are just checking. Okay. So next we have OR gate has two or more inputs with one output. Okay. And the output is one when either input A or input B or both are ones. Either input B or input A or when both are ones, you get the maximum that is one. And that is if any of the input is high, the output is high is the concept. If any input is high, the output also is high is the conclusion for your OR gate. Next, we are going on to AND gate. So we have AND gate which is represented in this manner. So you have two inputs A, B and one output. Output of AND gate is A into B for which we have truth table. So you have A, B and that is two inputs. One input, second input and the output is Y is equal to A into B. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is the scheme. Okay. So 0, 0, 0 into 0, it is 0. 0 into 1 is 0. 1 into 0 is also 0. 1 into 1 is 1. Okay. So this is the AND gate concept what we have. Okay, which means to say that AND gate has two or more inputs, yes, and one output. We know two inputs and one output. Output Y of an AND gate is 1 only when input A and B both are high. Okay, both are high. If when both are 1, only then we get high value here, rest are low values. That's all about your AND gate. These are very important in case of your MCQs. Next, we are getting on to NAND gate. Okay, NAND gate means 
not gate is added to and gate that's all okay so and gate symbol you know so you have two inputs a and b not gate you have a not structure here and this is the output which is equal to and gate plus not gate and is what a into b not is what complementary concept has been added a complement so complement we will add so now we have the truth table as two inputs and one output a b and y is equal to a into b complement so you have 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so 0 into 0 is what it is 0 but the complement opposite ulta of that is you get 1 0 into 1 is again 0 but ulta of it is again 1 1 into 0 is 0 again complement of it is 1 1 into 1 is 1 the complement of it is 0 so this is the opposite of your AND gate you can see 1 1 1 0 whereas you have your AND gate as 0 0 0 1 okay so that's all about your NAND gate next we are going on to NOR gate NOR gate is opposite of your OR gate okay so you have NOR gate in the sense NOT plus OR gate okay two inputs A b one output so y is equal to a plus b was your output nor gate means complement will be added so it is nor okay so now when it is the truth table you have two inputs one output input a b output y 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 these are the inputs you supply there so 0 0 0 plus 0 is 0 complement of it is just 1 0 plus 1 is 1 complement of it is 0 1 plus 0 is 1 complement of it is 0 1 plus 1 is 1 itself again because it is maximum complement of it is back again 0 so this is a truth table of your nor gate which means to say that its output y is 1 only when both inputs a and b are 0 both input a and b should be 0 other than that neither one input or nor the other is 1 whatever the circumstance you will get always the low itself so only when it is 0 you get high value in case of your nor gate it is opposite of that of the or gate okay so in today's class we have completed the chapter of the semiconductor electronics with all the difference between the semiconductors conductors and insulators p-type semiconductors n-type semiconductors as well as the half wave rectifier full wave rectifier what is the working of a rectifier and biasing the condition forward bias reverse bias zener diode working in reverse bias condition as a voltage regulator as well as your logic gates that's all for today have a good day thank you